Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be solving another question from the second chapter of the Merriam textbook, question 96. And in this one, we need to determine the result of the three forces acting on the simple truss. And we need to specify the points on the X and Y axis through which R must pass. So at the end of this, we're going to find the resultant which has X and Y component and we have to see the line of action of that force is going to cross X and Y axis. So let's figure out the, the resultant first. So basically our R would be a vector for X component. We have to find the sum of all forces in X direction and we have the sum of all forces in Y direction, which is going to give us the Y component. If you want to, we can call the sum of all forces in x direction rx so if we look at this we have the x component of the 20 kilonewton which is this force and we know this angle is 30 degrees so we have positive we have x and y if we look at it our origin is at point o so we already have the x and y axis so we will have 20 the x component will be sine of 30 degrees that's one component and we also have the 25 kilonewton force which is already in a negative direction of the x and that's pretty much all we have for our x and if you want to calculate this we know sine of 30 is 0.5 so 20 divided by 2 is 10 10 minus 25 so it will be minus 15 kilonewtons that's the x component of r let's find the y component so for y component we have this time the x the y component of 20 kilonewton force which as we can see is downward negative so minus 20 this time we have cosine of 30 degrees and we have the 30 kilonewton force which is already downward so another negative component and we have to calculate this one we have 20 times cosine of 30 degrees which is going to be 17.3 plus 30 so this is going to be minus 47.3 so now we found our r so the r or resultant would be minus 15 by minus 47.3 j and the unit would be kilonewton so we figure out the resultant but what the question is asking is that we have to figure out how this we kind of have to figure out the location of this r and for finding that if we find a moment about point o that's going to give us another equation that we can find the location of this r in order to get the same moment of all these three forces so if you want to find a moment about point o we can go with each of these ones we have the moment of 30 kilonewton force and as we can see it's a clockwise moment so minus 30 times the distance would be the vertical distance is here so 6 plus 3 9 that's pretty much everything for the 30 kilonewton force we have the moment of 25 which as we can see it's a counterclockwise moment so will be positive plus 25 times the distance is what we have from O to here again we're looking for vertical distance 5 and we have the moment of the x and y component of the 20 kilonewton this will be the y component so this is the y component and this is the x if we look at the y component we'll see that it's going to make a clockwise moment so negative negative 20 cosine of 30 degrees and the distance from O to line of action so again we have the same vertical distance 3 plus 6 9 and we have the moment of the x component which is again clockwise moment so this one's negative 2 minus 20 sine of 30 degrees and the distance for that one would be this is the line of action so this is our distance or vertical distance that we have which is 5 and yeah that, that's pretty much everything for the moments that we have so minus 30 times 9 plus 25 times 5 minus 20 we have cosine of 30 times 9 20 cosine of 30 times 9 and minus 20 sine of 30 is 10 so 10 times 5 minus 50 so this is going to give us minus 350 point we can round up 0.9 kilonewton meter so that's the moment of all these three forces about point o and at the end of this we have one single resultant i'm just going to clean up we can see better so at the end of this we found a resultant which has both x negative x and y component i'm just going to show it like that r and for finding the moment 
we need the coordinates of we can break it down into these two components this will be our rx and this will be our ry so for the moment we have the moment of ry which is a negative moment since it's clockwise so the mo that we found which was minus 350.9 is equal to rx is equal to so we can call this x which is the vertical distance that we have and we have this one y so basically moment of ry is a clockwise moment so minus ry times x and the moment of rx is counterclockwise so positive plus rx times y is equal to this we already have the rx and ry again we're just gonna so in here we're just gonna put the absolute values for ry and rx because we already uh take the direction into account by our moment direction which was counterclockwise or clockwise so here we don't need to consider any negative sign for these two and if we do that minus 350.9 is equal to minus our ry if we get back here we have 47.3 x plus our rx is 15 y so now that we have this is pretty easy to figure out where it crosses the x and y axis so wherever it crosses the y axis we have our x is equal to zero so if we do that basically 15 y is equal to minus 350.9 which shows our y is equal to 350.9 divided by 15 so 23.4 meter negative that's going to be our y and when it crosses the x-axis the y is equal to zero so here we have minus 47.3 x is equal to minus 350.9 so this time 350.9 divided by 47.3 so this time we have 350.9 divided by 47.3 which shows our x is 7.42 meter and the final answer for the second part of the question where we needed to specify the points that are passes through x and y axis hope everything was clear and it all made sense let me know if you guys have any questions feel free to drop it in the comment i'd be happy to answer those and you guys take care i'll see you in the next video have a good one